Hey, how are you doing? Right, okay. So this is the book that I've been working on. <clears throat> it was, I first started it, I first started it to try and figure out, um, it was just basically trying to figure out <laughs> the um, technicalities of painting. Just trying to learn this shit, basically, you know, as you do, you want to learn about light and stuff. Trying to use it in my own way, but also do a bit of planning. I didn't really know how to use this fucking book when I was given it, so I thought, fuck it, I'll just put something in it that I don't usually do. And it's more of a notebook for this. But then I was, I was trying to, like, for teaching and making money through doing that kind of stuff. You know, I can't teach stuff I don't believe in. So um, I have to just start from the, the ground up, basically, and go through everything... And, you know, why certain things mean certain things and stuff like that. But then, if I didn't know, I had to go and investigate further, right? Because it's inherently a lie. Uh, it's a, like if you're just saying something, you have no idea why. So it, it sort of did that. And it jumped around a bit. Just I had some kind of words floating around. But just blobbing it out, basically. Kind of very vaguely just jumping over a bit here, jumping a bit there. And the idea for this, not beholden to anything and you know it was starting when I was starting to write like notes visually like this it was really starting to help a lot more because I, I saw things you know visually words are, are useless uh, well they can be they can be good but all they need to be is just say the one thing for me to know what this means it doesn't need to make sense to anyone else I need to go like shape is a thing da -da. I need, it needs to be unfiltered right so just to me all I need to see is like shapes these are like the emojis um, so, you know, it kept going like this, and I was trying to think more broadly, like spectrums and balance, you know, try it in maybe a more, say, so I'm just smoking, uh, rather than a, um, fuck, at least when I lose my train of thought, I uh, have to uh, pause for a bit. So, <clears throat> yeah, putting it within something with more, more of a framework, or something maybe that incorporates, like, uh, you know, some kind of correlation, some kind of like non-definability or something, or but still working within some kind of parameters. And then I'm just like doodling, and you know, I'm testing these things out myself. You know, I, I, I would rather like learn it all than uh, learn one thing really good, because I think it all kind of feeds into each other, which I think it does using different things. And then sometimes I'm just bullshitting, and this was actually today when I was reinventing my um, signature. It now it now means this. So I'm talk I'm talking about compressionism a lot. So I could be reduced down to the, the number 83 because that's all people see me as, glasses and a fucking moustache. So you can reduce that down, and, and I like the eight, number 8. It's like the infinity symbol, right? Um, but it's uh, fallen on the side. It's at least like infinity, as you could get, but uh, at least like number 8 is what it was, lucky number 8. But it's like uh, transcended, like from being broken, it has become... Um, it has become sort of uh, more powerful than uh, more lucky or more all-encompassing. I don't know, something about that I thought was quite, uh, it really attracts me to it. And number three as well, I think it's, you know, it's a cute little smile, it's a moustache, whatever the fuck you want to think, but really, secretly, it's got hidden layers. Like, you know, I think that three is the kind of least amount of information you need to define something, like a shape or, you, like, it sets the boundaries of, of anything. You need one, one, then another one, and that defines a pattern. So one one zero is like two ones to one zero. So you're saying there's a you, you can define proportion uh, sequence. Uh, with one one uh, one zero, like they're fifty fifty or all the same. So essentially they're nothing. So uh, you, one two and three is all like the minimum of anything you need. And so that's what you should always be um, sort of thinking about. Um, so here, uh, here I was trying to think of just ways of perceiving things like optically or, or what's it, uh, like conceptually, I suppose, or like what you're basically imagining. So basically, if you're doing it optically, you're literally, you're seeing something simultaneously at the same time. So like my fingers here and there, so I can see those simultaneously. So I'm basically playing spot the difference. I would argue, anytime you do that, then that, you're working from your memory. So essentially, you're working in, not the optical, but the uh, conceptual side. So you see the two sides here. I'm trying to work out which side, which part of your brain works on either side. So, like, because you could do optically thing, that's like a printer, I suppose. It's like a computer or 
or like pixel, like just translating over one to one. And you don't need to really conceptualize anything to do that effectively. You know, you could be a trained monkey and do that. Um, a computer can do that, it does that. <laughs> Whereas this one, when you're thinking conceptually, you're actually reinterpreting it. And that that strings throughout everything. Whether you reinterpret it through your feeling or percep your perception is such a subjective thing. Um, and so many different people. So then I was trying to find, well, what's this third one? Maybe the, the one between the two of them. And then I was thinking about gesture and this is a whole different like aspect as well. Um, and then, you know, I go off on something else. You know, I hit these broad topics, like one, two, three, and then I, I, I go back and I just like, I go back a bit, maybe talk about other things and see where that leads. This one is nowhere. You see, I'm trying to structure it already. It's just like, that doesn't work. You know, I work in it off in chaos, really, because I like to blob it out, like what I'm trying to think. It's like, well, there we go. And then just see where that leads and kind of work on from the last one, from the last one, like iteratively. And I think that's where creativity comes from and not from uh, like contrivedly thinking of something really elaborately, like having to define what it should be by the end of it. So, <clears throat> so you know, I was just trying to go into all different aspects of it, like, mm, you know, different, like just different variables, essentially, different variables that do different things and working with them like a spectrum of, okay, what's the sharpest, what's the bluntest, what's the did it, what's the did it, and what's the things in between with each thing. So you, each time you do it, you have to, maybe all the handles are the same, or the metal's the same, but the hair is different, or the hogs, or synthetics. Like if all, all the variables are the same apart from one thing, then you have to can quantify it, you know? And you can do that with everything. It just takes a bit of time. Uh, you can definitely do that. or do that to the point where it actually makes most, like, where it's relevant, you know, you don't do it with everything. Cause it's just like, okay. Um, <laughs> wait, hold on. Uh, I'm still, I'll send this to you. It's a long one, you see, cause this is my fucking book and no one, I've never explained this to anyone yet. Uh, cause no one's ever really seen to, I don't know, instantly get this. It's always, I don't know, really weird for some reason. I, I think some do. I think everyone gets this on a level, but they, they can't interpret all this like this just yet, in all this madness and how I explain it to them, so I have to package it up nice and neatly. And so anyone can do it, because this book is, in a meta way, helping write the book. It's about problem solving. It's Well, that's what it developed into after painting, but it's about problem solving and how to do it, and how to work creatively from one thing to, like, another. And you'll see, it's like how I've just been doing this. This whole video it was born from just like, here we go, look, I'll show you my book. Um, and you know, I'm very aware now. This is probably I'm pr this is probably the best succinct um, summarizations I've had of this before that people have asked for. Um, but uh, I've never been able to give it to them because uh, I've never had like the correct audience. <laughs> so, you know, not just, you know, whatever that fucking means, but that's the thought that was going into my head just instinctively, and I, I felt like it, I wanted to document that too. Um, so, you know, other things, and, you know, then I you know, started to think about physicality a lot more, and, you know, how you can apply, like, depth through physicality rather than um, anything else, like dark and light, you know. You can have different levels. If, if we're dealing with paint here, which is a physical thing, we have to think of it sculpturally because it always exists in space. It's, it's not, like, when we're looking at a photo on a screen, that's, you're not looking at a painting, you're looking at a photo of a painting, but people think it's a painting. You know, people look at things like that, then look at things like that. And so this is what I was thinking. It's like, on Instagram, it's something I just wrote now, on Instagram, like here on the right is uh, here on the right is a um, I, I've seen people that I know scroll through their Instagram like this. It's when you go through someone's artist page and then you change the view to make it go big, so you see their paintings big, big, big. And you scroll down and down and down, and that freaks me the shit out. I feel claustrophobic doing that. I can't handle that shit. I have to view it like in this grid mode where I see everything and I wait for what catches my eye, then I go closer, you know, and then within the painting you go closer and closer. You know, I want to start the broadest way out first and then go in because it's all about how these things work conversationally and maybe what's the outlier. And those outliers are where you find maybe some truth, maybe some like, ooh, what do they do there? That's different. Maybe this is something unfiltered, you know? So then, then <laughs> this turned into things that make me mad like like an idea for something like apparently things that make me mad or, or things that happen in my life i feel like that just sounds insane 
like and so I was thinking about uh, and then, like things I've been wearing before and things I gravitate toward and my sleep cycles and like I always like to wear a seatbelt even in a car people are like what why why would you you know you don't have to wear a seatbelt I don't care she's like I like a seatbelt it's like, like a cuddle <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I cracked myself up sorry <laughs> so then I was thinking about like good balance and like signatures and <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that is oh my god uh, here we go and um, yeah like other things like degrees of specificity and how you can describe things in different like loads you know getting I can't get into it now because it's so like it's so broad but this I'm gonna keep going to the, to, until this runs out of battery or something uh, you know, this, this is my secret, but you, the thing is like, these are, it's like coded, this shit, so it's only gonna make sense to me, it only will make sense to me, maybe you, um, I don't even, I keep forgetting your name, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> that person I'm speaking to, um, those things, depth through different ways, like optical illusions, I love illusions, and trompe l'oeil, or whatever you call them, and just ways that you can perceive, like, make trick the eye, or manipulate the eye, or manipulate, the, like, other things beyond the eye, like, like, feeling, and, um, you know, how, how does one, cor how can one, f how, cor correlate feeling, or develop feeling, and make, how can painting people like, feel shit? See, you know, I talk about, like, this is like a weird meta droid. It's like that person's drawing the same eyes, that person is drawing the same eyes, that person's drawing the same eye, the same scale. Like, everything's the same scale. <laughs> but I don't know, some kind of like optical illusion. This is information entry there. I'm not quite sure why. But, like, shit like this is what I've been, like, developing. Um, like, different, like, again, the post stamp. You know, just like ideas, like I was visualizing these illusions, like as paintings as well. Like I can rely on any any way I want to describe these thoughts. I can't rely on just words because the words are useless. It's not how I picture them in my brain. There needs to be some kind of chrono like chronologically like order to this thing. So sometimes arrows do that, or question marks where I don't quite know if that's right. You know, or it needs to be tested. And you see, over time, it gets more and more mathematical as they go deeper and deeper into this levels and thinking like trying how to break it down and this is where like this is where I, I, I wondered if I was even going insane and not quite at this point like more numbers and then it's just like I, okay numbers are too much just words please it's just or just I don't know maybe that's what I was feeling at that point and then going back a bit you know trying these different extremes and extremes sorry different pens even you know maybe a different color might you know maybe subconsciously I was mixing that around or just whatever was on hand really it's just it didn't have to be my special pen just a pen that I kind of like the feeling of and then so I was really trying to really get into numbers and look at like shit you know, you can you can probably see what I've been looking at by looking at the drawings. Um, here we go, here we go, the good stuff, uh, the bleeps and the bloops. <laughs> so this is where I'm like, what came first, space or motherfucking time? I don't know. So this number became quite special, the 5149 one. And, you know, talking about, like, flipping between two, like, opposing sides. Um... Da, 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 da. More like hard determinism, binary, but binary not in the binary sense of one, zero, like just on, off, on, off, on, off, like more than anything. Not necessarily binary on like the one and zero does not mean one and zero, it means like one state and one other state, order chaos, order chaos, basically, at the end of the day. Um, that's what it can be compressed down to. And this whole thing has developed into that, this idea of compressionism. <laughs> So, uh, more order, more chaos, reducing information, crushing it down so you could f go through and filter through as much information as humanly possible, so you can fucking warp speed through very complex thoughts through changing, um, through ch changing the sort of, uh, the way in which you visualize them and explain them. So this is why through emoji use is a really good way to just completely circumnavigate, like, plah, like circumnavigate, like, Words, um, you can second, seven, oh, pardon me, circum, cir, circumnavigate words, uh, and ideas and abstract thoughts much quicker than, um, just words because words people have to, people like a word online, like this shit, like, uh, 
you have to interpret them because you can't read tone, you can't read anything, you can't, like you have to read into it and make up a lot of it on your own, and that, that's exhausting. So you just jump to the instinct, like oh, that's probably they look angry. It's so easier because you because you don't have to be able to do that. So the emoji does all the work for you. It's like ha ha, no, don't worry. So you're not sitting there going like oh. Was he sarcastic? Like, I don't know. You know, kind of thing. Like, you don't need to think about it because they kind of made it obvious for you. And that's why it's good for both people's benefit. If you say you want people, if you want people to understand you, like you really do online, then I'm sorry, you have to start using emojis. Um, like, I know it sounds ridiculous. I never use it. LOL, Lameo. I never use this stuff um, because these, these words, these whatever. Because uh, I thought they were silly. They weren't me. It's not high talk. I don't go LOL when I speak, when I laugh. But on that platform, ha 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 ha, no one says that either. They go, <laughs> you know, they, they giggle. They, they, they do all these weird nuanced things. So you, the words become an abstract concept of what, uh, like on the digital space. Because at the end of the day, these are, these are fucking like, those are fucking uh, abstract. Those are drawings, you know? They are uh, lines arranged uh, in a in a pattern that ha that uh, represent a abstract thought or idea, and um, I'm just gonna save this right now so it doesn't fucking crash because be I can't be bothered to explain this again. I really fucking can't. So here you go, round two. Keep going. Um, so yeah, the, the, those things, the, we, this, these are drawings, these are drawings, these fucking things, non, whatever, like, what, these are just, they're abstract, they, they, they form in a way, and even, like, typeface, like, graphic designers will agree that that is important as well, like, the way we read text and font within, within just how they're shaped as well, that's very important to how you read them, like, Comic Sans is, like, kiddy and jokey, but maybe that's intentional, maybe you need kiddy and jokey, I've been using kiddy and jokey Comic Sans for memes, to, like, describe, you know, the most, the thing that's called, like, the most ridiculous, uh, like, a graphic designer's freaking hate it, and I would say the, the graphic designers that don't see any validity in it would be, like, the, the overly academic people who don't see, uh, validity in emojis or nonsense or chaos in their work, but that's the thing. That, I wouldn't call that artwork, because to make art is to reiterate and to iterate on an idea, create mini chaos over order to uh, extrapolate upon an idea and um, extrapolate upon an idea and go uh, further and uh, create a new, uh, new order from chaos, which is actually like, it sounds ridiculous, but it's, it's less chaos it's um because the order the chaos is necessitous because the the old order does not work because it still produces chaos if it didn't produce chaos uh if like if it was like fully ordered it would not produce chaos and therefore i would argue there would be no necessity for art i would say art would be a way to continue to develop uh communication which is something as humans we do uh, more developed than any animal uh sentient being that we know, we uh, iterate uh, language. Um, computers can help do that, um, but we iterate language at um, very, very, like, you know, we can oh, lose my train of thought. So this is why I still need to keep at it because it's still a little rough, still a little raw, dude. But, you know, then it's some side to go like, okay, let's try and make it a bit bit more presentable because maybe I have to start now I was thinking I have to start presenting these ideas to a, a bit of a broader public and have them challenged a little bit more because you know at the end of the day I if I want this to be empirically true if that's the right word uh, then I have to um, be very transparent about all of this and be very open for to change and I do want it to be because my intent at the end of this is to find some kind of more universal truth you know, so now it's do now I'm doodling differently because I'm I'm seeing differently and I'm thinking differently and it's developing my language in other ways. You know, maybe it's not like really pretty or anything yet, but I'm thinking very differently because I'm seeing the formula very differently and I'm breaking it and rearranging it to my artistic intent. My artistic intent at the moment is to have people understand what I am trying to say. That's what I say is my necessitous my reason for Making art is because no one could ever understand what the fuck I was doing and I couldn't understand what the fuck they were doing so I had to improvise and um, or, or talking about, I don't really know, I can't really know but there's some kind of psychologist who will <laughs> figure that out while I'll talk to them about it. But anyway, thank you very much. Bye bye.